Hey, what's up, people? This is Sheep Show, and I am born again. And this is KSBY Channel 6. They are an NBC affiliated network broadcast news station that covers California's Central Coast, and they have been on the air since 1953. By all accounts, they are a bona fide news organization. KSBY has a YouTube channel at KSBY TV where you can find news related content dating back to when the channel was created approximately 15 years ago in 2007. Their YouTube channel has a current subscriber count of approximately 13,000 subscribers. This is Aaron Fay, who is described as a multimedia journalist on the KSBY website. By all accounts, Aaron Fay is a duly authorized representative of a bona fide news organization. And this is Slow County Observer. His real name is Gabriel, but like many in this social media age, Gabriel uses a pseudonym and is commonly referred to by his channel name, Slow County Observer, or his abbreviated channel name, Slow. He is a self-described local news outlet slash videographer slash civil rights activist. Unlike KSBY, many, erroneously and ignorantly in my opinion, do not consider Slow County Observer a bona fide news organization, nor do many, again erroneously and ignorantly in my opinion, consider Gabriel a duly authorized representative of a bona fide news organization. This poses the question, who decides what a bona fide news organization is, and who decides if someone is a duly authorized representative of a news organization? The First Amendment to the United States Constitution guarantees a free press. That means that government isn't allowed to decide who is and who isn't press. Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes press as the gathering and publishing or broadcasting of news. It describes journalism as the collection and editing of news for presentation through the media, and it describes mass media as a medium of communication that is designed to reach the mass of the people. This is what KSBY and Aaron Fay do. This is what makes KSBY a bona fide news organization and Aaron Fay a duly authorized representative of a news organization as well as a multimedia journalist. Ironically, this is also what Slow County Observer does. So again I ask, who decides what a bona fide news organization is and who decides if someone is a duly authorized representative of a news organization? Is it determined by reach? Is a news organization with 13,000 readers, viewers, or subscribers any less bona fide than a news organization with 64,000 subscribers? If you answered yes to that question, then I would like to point out that it is KSBY with 13,000 YouTube subscribers and Slow County Observer with 64.6 thousand subscribers. May I also point out that KSBY has been posting to YouTube for 15 years and Slow County Observer has been posting for approximately 3 years and there's no reason to believe that the subscriber gap will not continue to widen. If reach does not define a bona fide news organization, then what does? Is it content, performance, or newsworthiness based? If you answered yes to this question, then consider this. This is a news report broadcast on KSBY Channel 6. The footage did not come from Aaron Fay or any other journalist working for or representing KSBY. It came from Slow County Observer. The latest on a story we first brought to you last night. A San Luis Obispo police officer is on leave following an arrest over the weekend that was broadcast live on YouTube. Today we're hearing from the person who took that video and an expert in police training. But first, let's get you up to speed and a warning. Some viewers may find the video disturbing to watch. Police say the initial call was for reports of a man dancing and yelling on the road on the 800 block of Froome Ranch Way. The video shows three officers trying to take a man on the ground into custody. As they struggle, the officers tell him to let go of the handcuffs. One of the officers warns him that he will be punched in the face if he doesn't let go. The officer then punches him. Police say they are investigating the arrest and use of force. KSBY News supporter Jacob Dizon has more. A video posted to YouTube by the channel Slow County Observer has raised questions about the San Luis Obispo Police Department's use of force. However, a retired excessive force expert in San Diego took a look at the video for himself and tells me there are additional factors to consider. As of Tuesday afternoon, the video uploaded by Slow County Observer has more than 17,000 views. I heard it on the scanner. Uh, it was a guy in the roadway uh, presenting a traffic hazard. 
and I just wanted to document it. That's what I do. Gabriel is the person behind the Slow County Observer account. He did not want to use his last name in our interview. He says he's routinely present at local law enforcement incidents, taking video at the scene and uploading it to his YouTube channel. As a first-hand witness of this recent incident, Gabriel says he thinks the officers used excessive force. It was unnecessary. It seemed unnecessary, I think, with a little more patience from the officers. Uh, it wouldn't have had, he wouldn't have had to elbow him in the head a bunch of times. If you're telling yourself that Slow County Observer is nothing more than a one-hit wonder and just got a lucky scoop, then consider another story broadcast on KSBY Channel 6. The corner of Broad Street and Mitchell Drive. KSBY's Aaron Fay has details. Police say a man brandished a semi-automatic gun at his property owner after a dispute. When the police arrived, they shut down this whole street, which is Mitchell Drive, and then they arrested the suspect on the driveway that you can see behind me right over there. Police received the call a little before 1230 this afternoon. Sergeant Brian Trainer told me the suspect was standing out in the yard when they arrived and that he was not in possession of the gun at the time. However, they were able to confirm a weapon was present during the dispute, so they took the man into custody. With all the polished glitz and glamour that the broadcast news stations offer, consider this. Although Aaron Fay reported on this story and it was broadcast on the network news, Slow County Observer was broadcasting live at the scene for a full 41 minutes before the network news arrived on the scene. This is footage captured by Slow County Observer of reporter Aaron Fay arriving. Jess, if, if I did what she's doing, uh, yeah, it would have been like, get out of the street. If I did this, yeah, there, there would have been problems. The guy is now out. The guy is out of the vehicle. Hands up, they're searching him. KSPY is missing it. KSPY is missing the shot. And they're handcuffing him. They're handcuffing him. I think I've made a convincing and compelling argument that Slow County Observer is in fact both a bona fide news organization and a duly authorized representative of a bona fide news organization. But just in case you're thinking he's just a two-hit wonder with the luck of the Irish and scooped the local news network twice, consider yet another recent story broadcast on the network news. Large police presence could be seen in a portion of downtown San Luis Obispo this afternoon. San Luis Obispo police are releasing little information at this time. Dispatch logs show they were called to reports of a crash at Higuera and Broad Streets around 319. The area was blocked off by law enforcement. Someone who witnessed the incident tells us a man was sitting in the street when they were hit by a car. The witness says when police arrived on the scene, the man was asked to remove his hand from his jacket and declined to do so. KSBY's crew at the scene saw rubber bullets and tasers being used. The man was eventually helped out of the intersection. We are working to gather more information from police. We will bring you that information both online and in our newscast once it becomes available. Now compare the static footage from the network news station to the images captured by Slow County Observer who was broadcasting live at the scene. He's purposefully in the middle of the road. They've asked him to get out of the road. He got hit by a car and he's still refusing to, to leave. Apparently they told him to get his hands out of his pockets and he won't. Ooh. 
they're shooting at him. Taser. If you are still unconvinced that Slow County Observer is a duly authorized representative of a bona fide news organization, then I am unconvinced that you possess a fully functional prefrontal cortex. Because the independent media is not shackled by the policies and political ideologies of corporate media, they are free to make their own rules and gather information on their own terms. They are often much more critical of government and law enforcement and far more likely to push back against unconstitutional, unlawful, and unenforceable directives than corporate media. This often puts them at odds with governmental agencies and law enforcement that is slow to come to terms with the digital age of cell phones and live internet broadcasting no longer solely available to corporate media. Independent freelance journalists are regularly persecuted by bad cops and maliciously prosecuted by corrupt district attorneys. The local judges are no better turning a blind eye and deaf ears to clearly established First Amendment constitutional protections. I have chosen to highlight Slow County Observer, one out of a multitude of independent freelance journalists disseminating newsworthy information via the internet. I expect Slow County Observer to continue to grow his audience as more people turn from mainstream media to alternative news sources. Slow County Observer currently has 64.6 thousand subscribers, but there are many others like Direct D, who has 154 thousand subscribers, and SGV News First, who has 180 thousand subscribers, and James Freeman, who has 423 thousand subscribers, and Lackluster, who currently has 671 thousand subscribers, which is more subscribers than the fifth largest newspaper in the United States, the Los Angeles Times. And let's not forget about the new guys like SDC Media who started disseminating newsworthy information just three short months ago and has 3.26 thousand subscribers. I will ask the question one final time. Who decides what a bona fide news organization is and who decides if someone is a duly authorized representative of a news organization? The answer is... I will leave you with one final thought. I believe that within a very short period of time, the free independent media will collectively have more power and influence than the mainstream corporate media. This is why the establishment is trying so hard to shut us down and shut us up. We scare them, and the fact that they are trying to shut us down and silence a free press should scare you. Yeah.